Business today, I am Rowena Kajumba and I am joined with a gentleman who is of very good uh, purpose here today because tomorrow we are celebrating Women's Day and we are focusing on financial details and financial deepening. Of course, focusing on Uganda is from FSD Uganda, that is financial sector deepening. That is Joel Muhumuza. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm glad uh, you made time for us here. No, and absolutely. Busy, indeed. Okay. Um, first of all, let us look at what you understand mm. when you hear the word women emancipation or women's day mm. women's day well first of all happy women's day to you oh well thank you, you know, i have to start <laughs> with that yeah um well i can speak about it from two perspectives one mm. of course personally um, yeah. i'm the son of a woman yeah um, all my bosses are women oh, uh, wow. so so as it uh, goes so for me i think women emancipation is something that um is highly due because mm. um, they're over half the population mm -hmm. for one and for us to not fully utilize the potential of over half the population mm. is a detriment to all of us um, you know I saw the promo that was running yes. with the president going to be the you know guest of honor at this oh, yeah. it's because he also understands and the government mm. understands that um, we cannot afford to leave out over 56 percent of the population mm -hmm. from participating from being able to um, sustain themselves financially to have good livelihoods mm -hmm. and to be able to contribute productively to the okay. economy. Now you are a partner support specialist here at FSD Uganda. Yes. Let us understand what FSD Uganda is. <laughs> yeah, so FSD Uganda stands for Financial Sector Deepening Uganda okay. mm -hmm. and it's a non-profit organization. Oh. It was started in Uganda in 2014 mm -hmm. uh, by the UK government and the UK aid okay. and there happen to be a number of FSD organizations throughout Africa. Yeah. And our work really is in three areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we support uh, the government in terms of policy mm -hmm. and um, industry associations to make a better business environment mm -hmm. uh, for financial services. Um, we also do research. Um, actually what's coming out soon is going to be called um, the FinScope study mm -hmm. which looks at financial service usage throughout uh, Uganda exactly. and that study has been used by the Bank of Uganda, mm -hmm. by uh, the Uganda Bureau of Statistics mm -hmm. uh, in terms of planning and understanding of uh, usage of financial services in Uganda mm -hmm. and then myself partner support specialist I work uh, mainly in product development uh -huh. working with private sector players banks and telcos and the like uh -huh. uh, to develop products that can be used so by basically uh, that one person that is pushing this one way or another <laughs> uh, you're insisting on the fact that we need to uh, deal with some gaps now think uh, speaking of gaps uh, when we look at our international theme we're looking at time is now and uh, rural and urban uh, activities in this particular case, transforming women. Now, mm. ours in particular is focusing more on the rural women. Now, let, let me ask, where, where do we see the gaps? If we're looking at uh, a theme of this kind, where do we see the gaps when we come down to the women? What gaps probably within uh, uh, you, what, what you're doing, what you've yeah. seen, the gaps are and point them out? Yeah, well, for one, I'll start by saying um, a lot of the gaps that we see mm. are historically, you know, social. Uh, okay. that we have from the way the social makeup has been one of the biggest gaps we see in accessing for example mm -hmm. credit in Uganda mm -hmm. is you're required to have collateral to have some form of land um, or a mortgage in a household owning property yeah. but we find that most women do not own property um, either because of traditional reasons they have not inherited property mm -hmm. or the property is in the names of a male relative oh. and for that they are unable to access finance even though uh, mm -hmm. what we've seen from the village savings and groups associations is yeah. women are typically much better at handling finances and oh, much okay. more shrewd at handling mm -hmm. finances so that's one barrier towards women especially entrepreneurs getting finance the lack mm -hmm. of ownership um, of property that they can use as security okay. secondly we also see a gap in literacy not only financial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also numerical and digital which is the new very, true, uh, very yeah. powerful thing so mm -hmm. even with the mobile phone um, to use products that are going to be provided over the phone which is much easier for a financial institution to do because they don't have to put up a branch mm -hmm. um, somewhere very far in the rural areas they can ac you can access finances over the yes. phone but if people are not naturally um, understanding the tendencies are so, such that you know before you understand the service you're not going to uh, try and use it yes. and we found that there's been a disparity in usage between men and women mm -hmm. uh, a lot of women actually I think 76% of women yes. do own a sim card but only 46% own the phone Indeed. so yeah. even if you have the sim card <laughs> if you're sharing it with uh, your husband and you have some money on it he's yeah, going to look and say what's this uh, yeah. you know I need you to <laughs> hand over some of this cash you need to enjoy yeah um, yes. and lastly I think we've mm. also seen an issue around identification yes. IDs 
we've made some movement um, against that now with the national ID registration. Wow. The numbers that we've seen in terms of registration, especially in rural areas, has been good. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you think about it, there was no real reason for someone to have a formal ID, ID because yeah. you know not many people are going to be driving, you mm -hmm. don't have a passport. So yeah. if you come and engage a formal financial institution, mm -hmm. you don't have an ID, you don't have a form of ID that can be used. But now with the national ID, at least you have a starting point. Okay. Where you can now, looking at some of the gaps that you pointed out as uh, financial sector deepening yeah. where do you feel you've uh, uh, and you know your success story where are these okay. areas the gaps that you've managed to feel and you're thinking well we've filled some of these gaps and mm -hmm. we're still going well like I mentioned earlier we've mm -hmm. uh, seen great strides around the national ID mm -hmm. uh, sector what we're working on now is mm -hmm. providing access uh, through near the National ID Registration Authority okay. for private sector players to <coughs> access the national ID database mm -hmm. that means um, you will have uh, what they call in financial Financial service terms a credit history mm -hmm. so if you're paying off your meme if you're paying off whatever bill and it's tagged to that number mm -hmm. it shows that you have financial capability and you're much better off at receiving financial services okay. because you've proven that you can use something mm -hmm. um, one big piece we've done on the policy side is support the government uh, to create um, the movable collateral uh, securities uh, bill. bill now yeah. with that um, it's really just talking about for n for its uh, Traditionally, it has been mortgages, mm -hmm. fixed properties, land, mm -hmm. or a house. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, with the registry that's coming in place, you can actually use a sewing machine, mm -hmm. you can use a bike, whatever it is. I and we yeah. find that more women entrepreneurs have um, those sorts of uh, assets with them, but typically they've not been able to be registered mm -hmm. as uh, assets that they can use as collateral. So that's one big win for us, opening up access okay. um, for women. In now, we're regard. looking at about 76% of the population rural areas yeah. and 24% urban centers. Yeah. Now, which is a challenge here yes. because then at the end of the day, still the bigger number of women, if you say you're going to focus on them, are in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. Let us look at why now. Don't you think we could have uh, dealt with this issue or dealt uh, with uh, the rural areas much earlier than this? Yes, um, you know, the shame is on us. I mean, yeah. really, we should have been doing work um, as a country, really, on that. But, yeah. you know, we've had a lot of issues, especially around stability mm -hmm. in, as a nation. Yeah, true. And typically what happens is you go for the low-hanging fruit. You start mm -hmm. in the cities mm -hmm. and then start moving. The biggest revolution, I would say, that we've seen is in the mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Now, the mobile phone has penetrated where bank branches couldn't go, where people couldn't go. The, mm -hmm. the, the roads are not really well done, but you might find a mobile money stand there mm -hmm. so using those rails now there is a pathway for us to start developing services mm -hmm. um, not only for uh, women but also youth mm -hmm. um, what I'm one thing we're very proud of is the national financial inclusion strategy has been passed, passed it yeah. is now a government policy mm -hmm. and the working groups have been put together and the focus area the number one focus area is women youth yeah. and then uh, forcibly displaced peoples so the efforts now are to ratify or correct um, sort of the the uh, unforeseen uh, challenges when people were only focusing on the urban areas the urban because it's area. easier to do it here mm -hmm. but now we realize we have to take the whole because country. there's a lot of exposure here people are a little bit exposed and the challenge I think in the rural areas is exposure yeah okay yeah. now let us look at where this starts from let us look mm -hmm. at the girl child now we're yes. looking at one in five now according of course uh, to UNICEF they're looking at one in five mm children getting into uh, getting pregnant or into child marriages uh, mm -hmm. compared to the one in four then now that uh, someone may say how much of, inf of an impact is that yeah. but again we can see you know you start from somewhere you start it's, it's progress yes. now this is some of the challenges just yeah. one that i've actually pointed out yeah. in regards to when we come to the rural areas and i think uh, then that fails most of the young girls mm -hmm. to get themselves learned or educated mm -hmm. to have information mm -hmm. uh, how best do you think we, we as a country uh, can deal with this? Or do you have any kind of trainings as, mm. as, as you guys, as a financial support deepening, rather, uh, yeah. financial sector deepening? Do you have any kind of trainings to make sure that you uh, train, uh, skill, and keep uh, these people informed? 
Yeah, well, so a lot of the work that we've done, especially when it mm. comes to the rural area, has been rather than us prescribing solutions, yeah. first of all, it's listening. It's I think yeah. what often happens is we'll sit in our nice air-conditioned offices uh, and yeah, say, yeah, these guys need savings <laughs> accounts. But really, when you go to the ground, if someone is earning a dollar fifty a day, mm -hmm. what she needs is not a savings account. Maybe she needs a more secure way for her to make payments. Mm -hmm. So once you have the conversation, you realize, well, the solution that she needs is this. Mm -hmm. So part of the work that we've been doing now has been looking at where women already are mm -hmm. accessing finances, finances. And they've been doing it through the village savings groups. Mm -hmm. So now that's a collection of women who come together. It's about 80% women, 70 to 80% women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are avenues in which um, a lot of partners are now using it to talk about nutrition, talk about the importance of education, sure, yeah. how you can save also so that the mm -hmm. daughters as well as your sons can be able to go to school. Mm -hmm. And we've seen traction there because um, it's a mass effect rather than going door to door, one to one. Mm -hmm. And even we found that men, after seeing the reactions and the prosperity that comes into mm -hmm. their homes from women being part of these savings groups, actually are now starting to encourage uh, their wives to join these groups. Um, okay. It's a long term plan, but mm -hmm. it's something that I think is more stable because they will be saving with their own money, mm -hmm. lending to each other, and understanding the rules of finance so that by the time they engage a formal institution, mm -hmm. they're already quite conversant, they already understand what load they can take on mm -hmm. and what load they can't and they get to decide for themselves okay um, now I, I i would love to assume or rather think that you deal directly with women and the youth mm -hmm. sometimes now what are those things you look at because challenges like you mentioned some mm -hmm. of them will approach you and say well if my husband found out <laughs> that i am part of this yeah. there's definitely going to be a problem isn't that uh, some sort of hindrance there in, in slowing you guys down especially when it comes to working with women Yes, um, and that's why uh, we partner with all kinds of, I mean, UNICEF is one of our partners, yeah. UNHCR and all of these, uh, because it's not only finance in and of itself is agnostic. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's a service for everyone, mm -hmm. but the social conditions will either hinder someone uh, accessing services or might color the way they appreciate those services. Okay. So again, we might, um, for example, the issue with husbands, we found yeah. that showing success, first of all, mm -hmm. showing success and empowering the woman on how they should you know actually speak up and bring and these bring, things yeah. out to the forefront um, often it's also saying you know if you mm. feel it's a security issue please do not bring it up um, and that's one thing we've also encouraged our financial service providers to be conversant about when you're selling a product uh, and you're in this village mm -hmm. use the local authorities use the local people mm -hmm. to understand well the texture here maybe in this region is you have mm -hmm. to first talk to the man before, before the woman yeah. gets those services so it might be painful that you have to start with the man to tell him something he's really not <laughs> interested him, yeah. but it's better than causing havoc in the home because oh, yeah. almost like doctors we have to think first do no harm mm -hmm. and then slowly start to inject um, you know some sort of healing in that in that yeah. direction and empowerment in that direction it's mm -hmm. not going to be a one-year solution or two mm -hmm. year but yeah. it's better that we look at it systematically mm -hmm. so that um, the children who grew up in a home where they see their mother mm -hmm. is empowered are much more likely to demand for the same Okay. Yeah. Now, when we go back down the ground, basically what we have here is uh, the National Development Plan, which is uh, providing an uh, overreaching framework for social economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. now, in addition, we have Uganda Gender Policy, we have the Equal Opportunity Policy. Now, we have all these policies <laughs> and, you know, all interesting yeah. paperwork that uh, yes. we talk about. But when we go back on ground, are these tools you use? And in any case, are these women aware that they could use these as tools to empower them? Yeah, often I think what we have is, I don't think Uganda needs any more policies, really, <laughs> from where we are. We've got enough policies. We've got enough, yeah. It's now about implementation. <laughs> and when you talk about uh -huh. implementation, it comes down to budget. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where things get a little bit dicey. Yeah. However, um, the conversations are now pivoting in that... Um, the private sector and development actors such as our, uh, ourselves mm -hmm. are now in the fray. Rather than working on our own individual ideas, mm -hmm. um, we're working under the auspices of a framework, which is the National Financial Inclusion Strategy. Mm -hmm. I'll drive back to that because it's all encompassing and it looks at it from um, what we call a market uh, development standpoint. That mm -hmm. means you're not going to start by giving out money to people yeah. but looking at what the root causes are uh, yeah. and then starting to address those mm -hmm. so for the next five years really it's addressing those things and the main thing i would have to tell you is infrastructure mm -hmm. and by yeah. infrastructure i mean um what is the accessibility mm -hmm. of people to services mm -hmm. 
the mobile phone has been the biggest one but how much can you do on the mobile phone for example the languages mainly are english so part Very of what true. we're doing is how can we change those languages to make it all encompassing mm -hmm. uh, people might not be able to read so how can we do voice information mm -hmm. so that the agent is not now taking advantage oh, of you just yeah. because they say just yeah it says give me three thousand yeah something like that. you need to be able to, to understand. Uh, understand and also be able to enforce your rights mm -hmm. so starting from a place like that where you give people that energy uh, surprisingly you find that most people once you give them the information mm -hmm. then run with it i mean we're the most entrepreneurial country in the world yeah, so yeah, it it's just a small catalyst that's required in mm -hmm. order to get things moving but i agree with you we have a lot of policies, <laughs> a, lot of policies. a lot of things yeah. have been written but i would always yeah. urge people to look at what's being done, done where yeah. are the sensitization activities mm -hmm. happening because that's where uh, our focus has been a lot of mm -hmm. course the policies are good but yeah. the policy is only as good as its implementation yeah, very true now let us look at uh, opportunities okay. the opportunities uh, if, if you're looking at you as financial sector Uganda when you sit back and you're dealing with these women you're dealing with these people what are these opportunities you see that probably women haven't gotten themselves involved in and mm. they're there and mm. we we'll probably get ourselves involved in them mm. and maybe why aren't we seeing it because yeah. sometimes uh, like i might say uh, due to what society is and traditions some of these opportunities could be ignored mm. well i would say two things one i would encourage everyone if you're not in a vsla or a circle mm -hmm. please join one yeah. uh, make sure you join <laughs> one now uh, yeah. we've got the tier four regulations coming out which means um, they are going to now be overseen by um, the Uganda Microfinance uh, Regulations Authority, which mm -hmm. means if there is any funny business yeah, going on, yeah. you have a place that you can get recourse. Mm -hmm. But that we've seen is a great place to start informally, mm -hmm. saving money, having a commitment and having a plan. Yeah. That Those are the things that are you know, readily available. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you've got a mobile phone, um, one of the places you can start is by, you know, seeking financial services. Yeah. Um, even on the USSD, you can just, you know, for, uh, I think it's the cost of about 100 shillings. Yeah. For 100 shillings, you can get some financial information and where your nearest service point is. Yes. Um, secondly, I would say for people who are in the urban areas and you're, you're probably wondering what can I do mm -hmm. to get myself to a certain point, um, I would say there are a lot of services around. Of course, there sometimes you can be crowded out by the noise, mm -hmm. but everything from PSFU, that's Private Sector Foundation, mm -hmm. Enterprise Uganda, all these mm -hmm. provide services. Um, and you can just walk up to them. You can even walk up to a, a bank. I think a lot of, oh, yeah. the way the bank is set up, it's very intimidating. It's, it's very you know, true. it's one yeah, of the conversations so I have. Like you know, I, my shoes are not very <laughs> clean. How can I walk into this place? But yeah. um, what we try and encourage people is, you have the confidence that they're here to serve you. Mm -hmm. Walk in and demand that they tell and you they, they what they have for you. Mm -hmm. And now with the movable collateral, um, security thing being passed one focus for this year is us going to be uh, talking about it shouting from the rooftops mm -hmm. to say now you can register whatever you asset you have you can mm -hmm. start from where you are there is definitely a place you can start it might not be ideal but once you start yes. and you use your ID I would always recommend people get their national ID because once you have that you're creating a history from which you can uh, leap off to greater yeah, things. Very true. And uh, I think uh, what, when you talk about uh, exposure, tradition and all those things, yeah. I think some of the major reasons why we're seeing women lagging behind. And we've seen also powerful women that you, you might expect to be powerful women. At, at some point they go back and say, how will people <laughs> think of me yeah. if I walked into a place and said something, if I walked into a place and demanded to say something. Mm. Now real quick, um, where do you see us heading mm. you know in regards to what because every year we do celebrate women's day every year mm -hmm. we're excited about women's day and we're pointing uh mentioning a few things here and there and most of our women i must tell you for the past years since we've been celebrating women's day are stuck in small businesses medium businesses and, and not you know pushing yeah. boundaries yeah mm -hmm. i think um going back to the infrastructure thing i think mm -hmm. the problem has been we've been treating a gunshot wound with uh, a yeah. band-aid yeah. we just plaster over it and make uh -huh. it look good mm -hmm. right the only way financial services can work is if everyone is digging in if everyone is using uh, the bank or uh, the mobile phone or an mno or some sort of fintech to do payments and they're doing it electronically most likely mm -hmm. uh, because then the more information that's built the more reliable the more understanding we have of people and then we can move on um, i think 
building infrastructure mm -hmm. if if we continue along the path that we're at where nita is doing some work some, that's yeah. uh nira is doing some work mm -hmm. in a few years we'll be in a place where most people will have easier access to financial services mm -hmm. and then you know hopefully we won't be talking about women as a special <laughs> interest group you it know did. we can actually find Such some form of balance. equality yes, yes yeah. because where we are now we, we're feeling like there's some sort of yeah <laughs> we keep talking about it but it's mostly <laughs> lip service um, yeah. but like you said i think what we should demand is no longer lip mm -hmm. service but saying what actual things, things are yeah. being done uh, from our side we're saying let's build the infrastructure let's build the rails mm -hmm. and then from there start charging banks to say we want a product that actually speaks to people who live in Chiria Dongo. We don't want a product that is the same, same as people yeah. who are on Kampala Road and yeah. where they work, where they can just walk into the bank branch. Okay. So real quick, way forward as we wind up this discussion. Yeah. So I would say um, from our own personal perspective, mm -hmm. I would say I would encourage everyone to look up the National Financial Inclusion Strategy. It's available mm -hmm. on uh, the Bank of Uganda website. You can give them a lot of feedback. They're yeah. in a phase where they're ready to listen. Mm -hmm. um, and also for us as financial sector deepening, mm -hmm. uh, I would say you can look at our website um, ask us whatever questions you want uh, on our website we have all sorts of information that can help mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, displays of things we've done with our partners which are products and services for people in rural areas yes. and in case you're interested you know you can always go there and get a contact or you can reach me directly okay. and endeavor to give some feedback. Well, thank you so much Joel Muhumza who is of course uh, the partner support specialist at FSD which is financial sector deepening Uganda and he has pointed out a couple of things that probably we need to look into and, and uh, stop uh, at some point we need to because now it's sounding cliche every time you, you compare men and women uh, we need <laughs> to reach a point where it's a balance and we're having equal, <laughs> equal opportunities and when we talk women we also talk men yeah. and that is something that probably we are all hoping to achieve at a certain point in life right now a business personality thank you very much thank you yes May 1956 in Kamuli district is a Ugandan lawyer and politician she has been speaker of Parliament of Uganda since 19th May 2011 she is the first woman to be elected speaker in the history of the Parliament of Uganda she succeeded Edward Sekandi who served as speaker from 2001 to 2011 she is also the current member of parliament for Kamuli District Women's Constituency, Busoga Subregion, a position she has held since 1989. Rebecca Kadaga attended Namasagali College for her high school education. She studied law at Makere University, graduating with a degree of Bachelor's of Law in 1978. She went on to obtain a diploma in legal practice from the Law Development Center in Kampala in 1979. In 2000, she obtained a diploma in women's law from the University of Zimbabwe. And in 2003, she obtained a degree of Master of Arts specializing in women's law also from the University of Zimbabwe. Between 1984 and 1988, she was in private law practice. From 1989 to 1996, she served as the member of parliament for Kamuli district in the district women's constituency. She served as the chairperson for the University Council of Mbara University between 1993 and 1996. During 1996, she served as Secretary General of the East African Women Parliamentarians Association. From 1996 to 1998, Rebecca Kadaga was the Ugandan Minister of State for Regional Cooperation, Africa and the Middle East. She then served as Minister of State for Communication and Aviation from 1998 to 1999 and as Minister for Parliamentary Affairs from 1999 to 2000. She was elected as Deputy Speaker of Parliament in 2001, a position she held until 19th May 2011 when she was elected Speaker of Parliament. Following the February 2016 general election, Kadaga was unanimously re-elected as Speaker of Parliament on 19th May 2016. Kadaga is an active campaigner for women empowerment and emancipation in politics. She has received several honors for her work, which include the Golden Jubilee Award by the President of Uganda and the Grand Officer of the Republic of Benin from the President of Benin. Now in our business bite, or rather top bite, we are going to look at a lady commonly known as Mama Cheers, and she is uh, a dairy, and she's an entrepreneur and a businesswoman and a farmer, and I must say, we are looking at the journey to prosperity.
When I started business, I had a challenge. One, I was not a professional, and I started production, manufacturing, which was a unique business by that time, not managed by local Ugandans or women. So when I started, I had a lot of challenges. One, I was every single the company. I didn't know what to do. That is the time I went to Enterprise Uganda. I said, what can I do? My business is good, but I cannot manage it and control it because I was every single of the company. I remember, Mr. Chichi, what you told me, put systems and controls, accountability and transparency, and employ the right people. Excellent. Those things have helped me to move from the state I was in, state of confusion, and actually at the time I was sick, mm -hmm. the doctor could not tell what was paining me. It was stress. <laughs> because the demand was more than the supply, and I didn't know what to do and where to go. As I stand today, I'm very happy that uh, I've worked in Northern Uganda. I've managed to organize the community in a land to plant mangoes, and we are setting a factory. 2,500 outgrowers have managed to plant, and their mangoes are growing. And uh, two, another 2,500, they are going to start planting this season. We have really created a an income for the next 50 years Excellent. in the hands of those people who are living in the camp. We worked with UNCDF and the Miss of Local Government and a led local development program to resettle the people who are living in the camp to go back to their land by setting a nuclear farm. Since 1996, my dream was to make fresh juice from fresh fruits. It was not easy, 22 years of struggling. But I want to thank God that we had a bumper harvest of mangoes, and uh, the community is very excited, the government is excited, and that some of the donor community are excited. Uh, I'm so happy that I'm realizing my dream, and I pray that within three years, a factory is set, and we are all set I think that is the time I can retire. You must leave the professionals and the young people to continue. Thank you. Very impressive, I must say, and oftentimes when you stand there and look at people appreciating uh, your hard work, uh, your efforts, then definitely uh, then you, it keeps you moving. And I must say, uh, these are some of the women that have pushed. And of course, uh, every other woman out there is definitely striving to make themselves better and have a better standing, uh, which is something that I as a woman am proud of. However, we still have some gaps to fill and deal with though uh, well we can't do that in a day or two it is a process and it is over time and we need to work alongside the men as well well do appreciate you for watching we come monday friday 9 a.m to 10 a.m i am rowena kajumba i am signing out but i am leaving you with the markets thank you for watching